Now, I'm not going to show you close-ups of poor Molly. I won't subject you to that carnage. Oh, boy, I can't wait to eat it. Awesome. Thank you, Holly. <laughs> <laughs> you seem tired. I'm very tired. <laughs> but I'm hungry, too. I can't wait to eat it. Oh, boy. <laughs> I used to joke about how lucky we've been when it comes to predators, specifically how lucky we've been for the past two years in having no incidents with predators attacking our chickens. The one exception, of course, is when we had that falcon go after our meat birds unsuccessfully. But it's been a pretty admirable track record that we've had. No fatalities due to predators, neither airborne nor land-based, over two years. All of our chickens, if they've died, it's been by our own hands or by sickness. I'd have an in-joke here on the homestead where I'd say, the bad guys haven't won around here. Well, that changed last night. The bad guys finally won. That's me, I'm dad dad. Good job standing, bud. <laughs> Do you want to describe what you saw this morning? Yes, Holly. Henry, Henry does too. So I was in the bathroom and I looked out the window and I saw something weird in the edge of the fence down there. It looked like a turkey was kind of balled up and laying against the fence, which they tend to do sometimes. But I thought that looks really weird. And so I came out and walked down and it was- Where was it at? It was right down there at the very, very edge. Um, actually at this panel that you can see there's- Sticking out a little bit. Kind of a dip in it. Okay. It was dead Molly. Molly's our black chicken that we've- mm -hmm. She was- in our original flock the original and, crew yeah it was a black chicken and observed it and it had no head but the rest of the body was intact henry's teething <laughs> the rest of the body was intact and being eaten by ants and mom took a look at it too actually mom's the one who cleaned it up because i had to go inside and mm -hmm. take care of henry but mom thought it looked like it had been laying there for longer than a day but there's no way that it could have been because sean does his walks every night so goodbye molly you and uh, i'm i'm starting to think we may have prematurely ditch, dispatched fighter because fighter kept the predators away so as many of you know, we recently dispatched our longtime rooster, a resident rooster here at the Yostead, Fighter, because he was way too aggressive. He would attack me, he'd attack anybody that was in here anytime we walked in. It was too much. He was attacking my head whenever I bent down to pick up the food. He drew a lot of blood from us, so enough was enough. We tried taming him, we tried doing tricks to show him that we were the boss. None of that work, he always attacked us. So we put him down and we traded him out with a young rooster, like a three month old rooster who hasn't started crowing yet, Conan, uh, that my good friends at the Kramers gifted me with. And so Holly brought up a great point. We never had any, any chicken or poultry loss to predators since he's been around and doing his fighter thing. We never had any predators come in and take out one of our chickens. And it makes me wonder if we maybe dropped fighter a little too quickly. Maybe we should have waited for Conan to grow up a little bit and become a bit bigger and actually start growing and actually be a threat to predators before we cut off fighter from his tenure. Either way, it happens. So we need to figure out what to do now so we don't start losing more of our chickens tonight and the next night and the night after that. Now I'm not gonna show you close-ups of poor Molly. 
I won't subject you to that carnage, but it was a chicken that had its head removed by some kind of predator. What kind of predator, we're not sure. This happened during the evening, so we're fairly sure it's not a bird of prey. It was something that came in to the chicken run, grabbed one of the chickens, Molly, took it here to the fence. The chicken got caught up in the fence and it couldn't take off the rest of the body, so it fed itself on Molly's head. And all this time you may be wondering, Sean, you have a fence. It's supposedly an electric fence. Why wasn't that working? Well, I think I mentioned it in a previous video, but we've never felt the need to electrify the fence. We've kept this up as a physical barrier only. It's never been electrified since we just started having the chickens during that first year. Fighter did such a good job of protecting them and we never had any predator threat that we just never lit the thing up. So what am I going to do? Well, tonight I'm going to light it up. I'm going to start the charge the fence again. Now the last major electric charger I had was actually for the pigs, the pig fence, and that was actually plugged directly into our electrical system through this box right here that's very powerful i don't know if i need to go that powerful yet so i dusted off my old solar charger which i i haven't used in geez over a year and a half and i'm actually charging it up via regular electrical charge right now we'll see if if it's actually making that much of a difference and turning it on we'll see how strong the actual charge is it's very weak you may not see this, but it's only 2.5 kV, which is very weak. It might give a little bit of a shock, but not much. And that's because it's probably not really properly grounded. So what I may do is ground it with a piece of rebar in the ground. I'll see what I can do. It's still weak, and the turkeys clearly aren't bugged by it. If the turkeys aren't getting shocked by it, then some hungry predator is also not going to be shocked by it. I may need to put the pig wire up. Okay, so the pig wire isn't working. The pig wire which is grounded to really deep stakes, that's hitting weak as well, which makes me think that all this tall grass and weeds is shorting, or all the weeds are shorting out the fence somewhere. So I turn the fence off and I'm gonna pull the fence back from the weeds and hopefully that will give me a charge. That's the last thing I can think of. simple move seemed to do the trick because check it out. In case you can't read that, that's hitting all the way to the top of the scale. So this thing's hitting very hard. Yep. It works. <laughs> so the chickens and the turkeys are now somewhat protected with a active hot fence. And what better way to celebrate homestead success like this, and by eating a meal completely raised on the homestead. And we'll start with some turkey wings that we put on the smoker. These are some big wings. Like they are. A, that's half the size of a chicken, and that's just a turkey wing. So I cannot wait to try those. You smoked those, right? Yeah, I smoked them, but then our smoker started acting up, and so I had to finish them off in the oven, but okay. they, they smell delicious. incredible, and they look incredible. What else is straight from our um, garden? This is all just veggies from the garden. There's um, zucchini, yellow squash, um, collards, And kale, I see little bits of meat in there, too. And, yes, there's uh, there's little bits of frank and beans, bacon. Frank and beans. So everything in our meal this evening 
was something that was either grown or raised on the Yostead. Oh, oh boy, I can't wait to eat it. Awesome. Thank you, Holly. <laughs> <laughs> you seem tired. I'm very tired. <laughs> but I'm hungry, too. I can't wait to eat it. Oh, boy. <laughs> It's the hunger speaking. That's really what it is. Well, before we dig in, I'm going to say goodbye to the chickens real quick, and then I'm going to dig in. Okay, so the fence is shored up, and it's hitting hard, which is all I can do right now without a rooster that is fully grown and will protect his flock by himself. For now, we'll have to just focus on this fence and hope that this does the trick tonight. I'll check in again tomorrow to see if we've lost any other birds, but fingers crossed, this will do the trick for now until our buddy Conan gets a little bit bigger and a little bit more protective of his flock. Before I leave, you might also be asking why I don't just shut the chickens in at night. Well, there's far too many to fit inside of that little chicken tractor that we have. So we haven't shut that thing in ages. And besides, a lot of the chickens sleep out on top of the A-frame or on top of the chicken coop. So half of them don't even go in there at night. So that would be kind of a futile thing to try and stuff all of them in there at night with the turkeys and the remaining chickens, including Conan, our buddy, he's somewhere in there, that are with us right now. Wish us good luck, and until we see you again next time, remember, slowly, slowly.